Hi. I'd like to make two comments in my reflections. Firstly, remember how Emily asks Adam what's important to people when they face their death? And Adam answers how their spirituality becomes important. I agree with Adam, and I'd just like to underscore his observation with empirical evidence. Indeed, there are several survey studies that ask people with different terminal illnesses and their family carers often, um, what is it they want most at the end of their lives? And indeed, um, what helps them to cope um, the best at the end of their life? What do they prefer? And here's what they typically say. Yes, managing my physical and psychosocial symptoms are very important, but also I want my spiritual needs addressed. And here's how this often comes out. They might say something like, I want to be at peace. That's very important to me. Or they might also say that having a sense that their life was very meaningful and perhaps even their death had purpose is also helpful. They also may want to know their belovedness more acutely. You'll observe most people don't want to die alone. They want the family they choose for themselves to be nearby. Um, you may observe many seeking forgiveness um, and reconciliation with people in their lives. Then when you ask them, well, how do you cope? They invariably at the top of their list will mention spiritual and or religious beliefs and practices. So for example, beliefs in an afterlife are very comforting. Think about it. If you believe in a heaven or nirvana or some reincarnation, that's comforting. Also having the belief that ultimately good will become a universal reality will be comforting. As far as practices, many find prayer to increase in its importance and frequency and meditation, or in Met Mary's case, she found comfort in music that inspired her. Secondly, remember how Emily and Adam agreed that nonverbal communication was really important, even if it was difficult with a mask on. This reminds me of how at the beginning of the COVID pandemic, there was a supermodel who talked about how we can smize. In other words, we can smile with our eyes. Indeed, we can. So it's really important to um, realize that what posture we assume, what attitude we have towards the patient internally will be expressed through our nonverbal communication. So um, there's research that shows that smiles that are interpreted as being the most authentic are the ones that engage the Duchenne muscles, the ones that create the crow's feet at the corners of the eye. Likewise, you can appreciate how if someone has a caring attitude in their heart, that's going to be expressed through their hands and vice versa, right? So I'd like to close by sharing with you some questions that were written by a nurse over 20 years ago. Her surname is Quinn, Q-U-I-N-N, -N, and I just help find them really helpful. She asks, do patients hear in my voice that I care, that I have time for them, that they are safe with me? What's the quality of my facial expression of my eyes? Do they communicate care and compassion or are they perfunctory and distant? Does the patient feel seen by me or overlooked? If the eyes are the windows of the soul, what is my soul saying to the soul of the patient? And what's the patient's soul saying back to me? Am I focused on the task at hand and simply touching the patient to get the job done? Or does my touch convey care, support, nurture, and competence? Does my touch communicate that I know I am touching this person's spirit as I contact their skin? Because where else is the spirit located but in a body? 
Do I speak of love and kindness and respect through my hands? So I just invite you to join me to try our best to be conduits of compassion as we provide spiritual care. Thank you. Spiritual care is an important element of the holistic care offered to our patients. Important for the overall well-being and health of patients. And is also considered an indicator of the quality of care. So spirituality and spiritual care is not an added component, but a core element of holistic care. At all times, of course, we are asked to be sensitive to patients' values and beliefs, to identify their spiritual needs. Spiritual care interventions are intended to facilitate spiritual health. And as part of a therapeutic model, the result for the patient is ultimately completeness and wholeness. Each person, each patient, has their own unique values. And taking the time to understand and undertake a spiritual intervention, as we have seen in this particular video, helps the nursing team adapt to provide the best interventions, the right care at the right time in the right place. It also clearly demonstrated that the nursing staff wanted to provide this quality, this effective care for their patient. And when they began to understand the patient's spiritual needs, then they felt themselves that they were giving the appropriate care. Understanding the patient's spiritual needs facilitated the team to feel they were meeting the patient's needs. Understanding the patient and their life story was key. And so a life history, a life story, helps us care in a more holistic and caring way. This particular approach allows the patient to share their spirituality, share their story, share their faith, share their particular religion, and provides for us ways to measure the care given. One measurable aspect studies have told us, studies have reported, is that spirituality is a strong promoter of psychological and emotional support. It can increase resistance against mental crisis following a diagnosis. It also helps decrease anxiety or depression and allows patients to cope better. An evaluation of spiritual care interventions demonstrates the provision of appropriate care to meet the patient's needs, to support their ability to find meaning, purpose in the face of sickness, in the face of end of life. And this involves recognizing their beliefs, their rituals, their rites, their faith tradition. We can measure the impact of patients' current illness on their spiritual well-being. Having a conversation about what matters to a patient and having a systematic approach to their spiritual history, spiritual needs, is an important aspect of respectful care and opens the door to conversations about many issues. Spiritual care must be integrated into the patient's overall care plans. And for the healthcare teams, it's important also to have an evaluation, an evaluation of the spiritual care given. And can be very helpful for teams, maybe in the case of a death, to have a review how did we meet the needs of this particular patient? Clearly, the video demonstrated that patients were cared for very well in their spiritual needs. And more importantly, staff felt that one, once they understood the spiritual needs, they could give the appropriate care 
And it was also very evident that the staff felt more at ease in their care once they recognised the needs of the patient.